Welcome to American Pool. This orientation will go over for both the Pittsburgh and Ohio branches. I'm Jules. And I'm Kaylee, and we'll be your hosts for this orientation. Meet the team. Brian Bell, President. Jen Bell, Vice President. Jules Diddle, Recruiting Training Director. Kaylee Hepburn, Assistant Recruiting Director. Ed Carroll, Senior Regional Manager. Andrew Diddle, Regional Manager. Emily Hilf, Assistant Regional Manager. Olivia DeVecchio, Staffing Assistant. Emily Hepler, Staffing Assistant. Area Supervisors. Area Supervisors oversee specific areas in your region. They work with both the guards and us here in the office. They're on call during all pool operating hours. If you ever need to know who your area supervisor is, contact the office. A communication flow chart will be placed at each pool. Use this as a reference for who to contact so that your issues can be handled promptly and efficiently. Opening day is May 26. All lifeguards must obtain their certifications or have been recertified by that day. OSHA, BBP, PPE, and heat stress training is also required. Hey Jules, what should be the number one priority for all American pool lifeguards? Safety! So, how do we keep a pool safe? Well, I'm glad you asked, Kaylee. You need to be rescue ready. Rescue ready means that you need to be ready at all times, sitting, roaming at the water's edge while searching the entire pool, wearing your proper uniform, which includes a guard suit, whistle, hip pack with rescue mask, and shoes that can be easily removed. Hmm, Joel, so you're telling me I shouldn't be asleep while guarding like that guy. Definitely not guarding like that guy. Now that you mention it, I thought of a few other ways to keep your pool safe, such as knowing and enforcing your pool rules. You should also know and refer to your pool's EAP in the event of an emergency. With all this talk about safety, have you ever thought about yourself? Who? Me? Yeah, you. Personal safety is very important. You should wear sunscreen or sunglasses and a hat call a safety break at the end of the hour, stay hydrated, and always wear your PPE when necessary. Oh yeah, safety breaks. At single guard pools, a safety break helps the guard refresh for the next hour and allows guards to clear the pool so that they may hop in and cool off, reapply sunscreen, refill their water bottle, check water chemistry and pump function, or use the restroom. It is recommended to be taken for 10 minutes at the end of every hour. Even though safety is our number one priority, injuries will still occur. All of the poolside binders will include a flow chart that shows what to do if an injury occurs. But Jules, you said personal safety was important too, so what happens if I get injured? That's a very good question, Kaylee. All you have to do is call the office and ask for Jen. She'll let you know what steps you need to take from there. If a life-threatening injury occurs, please call 911 immediately. Incident reports are legal documents, so it is important that they are all filled out correctly. You need to fill one out when any accident or incident occurs, even the smallest treatment, such as putting on a bandage. If 911 was called, Brian or Jen must be present to fill out the incident report. How many of you have read a factual book before? Many of you, I'm sure. This is how a report should read, with factual information, detailed and complete. On the top portion of your incident report, you should have the incident date, time, and if 911 was called. Also, the facility name and address, injured person name and address, their gender, and if a parent or guardian is present. Mm -hmm. 
Next, you must fill out the general and medical information, describe exactly what happened, then describe the injury. Be as specific as possible. Mark yes or no if first aid was administered or not and write by whom. Mark yes or no if there were any bloodborne exposures or not. Describe the first aid that was administered. Mark yes or no if further medical attention was needed or not. Lastly, write who the injured patron left with. Be sure to put the specific location of the incident and any witnesses with their contact information. Under the incident management section, put your name and date. If 911 was called, make sure that a driver fills out this form. Be sure to notify a supervisor and keep this form in the binder. Hey Kaylee, since it's my job to keep everyone safe, does that mean that patron surveillance is required? Yes, patron surveillance is your number one job. When scanning, make sure that you are searching with a purpose. When addressing safety with patrons, be sure to explain why their actions are unsafe. Always be professional and respectful. Hey Kaylee, do you like working for free? Ah, uh, no way. Me neither. All guards must clock in and out before their shift. It's easy. All you have to do is use your mobile device. You will not be able to clock in earlier than 10 minutes prior to your shift. If you have any issues, call the office or email pitscheduling at AmericanPool.com. The use of drugs and or alcohol is not permitted at any time during your shift. Using drugs or alcohol during a shift can result in termination from American Pool. Harassment of any kind is strictly forbidden. What is harassment? According to the US EEOC, harassment is actions, communication, or behavior that mocks, demeans, puts down, disparages, or ridicules towards a person. Physical assaults, threats, and intimidation are severe forms of harassment and bullying. Harassment can result in termination from American Pool. If you have been or are being harassed, please notify the office immediately. Hey Jules, do you like swimming in a dirty pool? Uh, that's kind of gross. Exactly, nobody likes it. That's why we must maintain a clean, safe environment for our patrons. Pools must remain clean and presentable. All pools have various assigned cleaning duties that can be found in the poolside manuals. Maintaining a balanced pool keeps the pool safe for all patrons. Make sure that you take chemical readings at the assigned time so that the waters are safe for all patrons to enjoy. If you're not checking the water's chemistry, you're not protecting the patrons. You can refer to your poolside binder to find a list of zones that chemicals should fall in. If at any time chemicals do not fall in these zones, refer to your communication chart. Opening guards are scheduled 30 minutes prior to the pool opening so that they may prepare the pool for the day, unlock the pool gates, set up rescue equipment, set up furniture, and other various cleaning duties. Closing time. Hey, what? Hey, back to business. Closing duties. There are various duties at the end of the day, like putting away rescue equipment, breaking down furniture, tidying up the pool area, preparing the pool for the morning, and ensuring that all gates are locked before exiting. Please remember, return the keys to the lockbox. Every pool has a manual with information to help you with your daily shift. Each manual includes communication flowcharts, chemical log sheets, incident reports, EAPs, pool rules, and any additional important information for your pool. Lifeguards are required to sign and date each sign-in sheet at the beginning of the day. All members, according to their pool rules and regulations, need to sign in both themselves and guests. All pools will have a folder of lifeguard certifications of the scheduled lifeguards. However, all lifeguards are required to have their certifications with them at all times. All pools will have welcome signs, pool hour signs, 911 slash emergency signage, and fecal matter signs. Inclement weather. Inclement weather could be thunder and lightning, heavy rain, or cold temperatures. 
Pools will close during long durations of inclement weather. However, the property managers make the decision on a case-by-case -case basis. Always assume you are to continue to be on duty unless notified by the office or a supervisor. Storm's coming, Kaylee! Ah, oh, clear the pool! Health inspectors can show up at any time. When a health inspector comes to your pool, please call the office so that a supervisor can be sent to meet them. Always have your lifeguard certification with you so that you can show it to the health inspector. Always be respectful with our property managers. Be willing to lend a helping hand if they ask for your help. If you ever have questions or concerns about tasks given to you by the property manager, call the office. Kaylee and I have high expectations for our guards. Always be rescue ready. Always be at or on the pool's edge in either your guard chair or roaming the pool deck with your rescue tube in hand. Remember the AAA, awake, alert, and aware. Hey Jules, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just texting. Uh, aren't you supposed to be watching the water? Oh, well, I mean, I'm doing that too. No, that is unacceptable. There are absolutely no electronics to be used while on duty. These include, but are not limited to, phones, tablets, computers and laptops, earbuds, and gaming devices. I totally forgot I was in charge of other people. I'm so sorry it won't happen again. It better not. Wait, so I have a question. Does that also mean absolutely no distractions are to be used while patrons are swimming in my pool? Like reading my book, doing my puzzles? What about schoolwork or anything else that steers me away from looking at my patrons? That's right, Jules, you can't do any of that. You need to be watching the water and the patrons at all times. We understand that illness can occur quickly, so if you are ever too sick to come into work, let us know as soon as possible in order to have the pool be open at the scheduled times. If you are to call off because of illness, American Pool requires a doctor's note in order to avoid being written up. If you ever have a family emergency that causes you to either miss your shift or be late to your shift, please call the emergency phone as soon as possible so that we can start finding coverage for you. If you are running late, please call the office so they can inform the property or the guard working before you. To avoid running late, know your route to your pool. Make sure you give yourself ample time to arrive safely. We understand that things happen. Inexcusable absence from work include, but are not limited to, being sick without getting a doctor's note, broken phone, overslept alarm, forgot about the shift. Hey Jules, uh, so my shift's on swap, but that means I don't have to go to it, right? Wrong, Kaylee. You still have to go until it's off of your calendar. Regional managers, supervisors, and the office staff can give out written and verbal warnings for any unacceptable behavior. For a list of these behaviors, please refer to your signed lifeguard agreement. As a lifeguard, you must remember that patrons rely on you with their lives. Failure to do your job can result in much worse than a write-up or termination. Failure to do your job can result in the death of a patron. Poolside meetings are held with your supervisor before the pool opens. These meetings are for you to learn the ins and the outs of the pools. Please save the date of the poolside meeting for your pool. And that's all. So if you ever have any questions or concerns, please call the office or email pit scheduling and welcome, welcome to, to the team. team.